Hi friends, host Eric here, host talking with many people. I'm alone here in the rar room, which does happen sometimes. Sometimes you can come on in here and uh, nobody here with the bot. You can ideate if you'd like and have a record of it on the raw channel. As I used to do when this thing first started and that was a lot more common. So, what I'd like to start make this video about specifically is what might broadly be called non-optimal ways of functioning or instances of the individual that the individual wishes expressed otherwise. Kimberly, can you move that water to the tortoise that's unhappy with it? Um, so it comes up as a phenomenon of this recent video in which I put the NTPs in the category of sexually confused people, right? Well, I want to stress when I say stuff like that, that I do make the claim that different types express non-optimal manifestations of self in somewhat predictable ways and in ways that are distinct from the ways in which other types express non-optimal expressions of self. So I do think it's likely that NTPs more than other types are prone towards neuroses about sex that express in certain ways, especially male NTPs. Those NTPs who don't experience that, because of where our FE is, tend to want to <laughs> proclaim, hey, I'm NTP, don't classify me as that. I'm sorry to the extent that I failed to make the distinction in an earlier video. I'm not classifying NTPs as that. I'm saying that to the extent that this is a, a non-optimal manifestation of self that is, that NTPs are at a higher risk for than other types, and to the extent that there are other individuals who express this manner of neuroses about sex, um, in the same fashion that I do. Here's my explanation as to why. And that's the important thing I want to draw here, the important distinction I want to draw here about typing in general. People a lot of times think that typing is about predicting what people, how people will behave. And it can be used for that, sure, with varying degrees of success. I think it works best when you're predicting how people will respond to certain approaches um, when you're trying to get people to respond in certain ways and not others. But the other reason why we use the cognitive function taxonomy is to understand why a person expresses in certain fashions. In other words, to have a mechanical model that one can reference and say, here are the mechanics of their thinking. Here's why they didn't react well to that. So it's not just for predictive purposes, it's for descriptive analysis as well, which links in necessarily to predictive purposes in the same way that TI and TE always kind of link in together. So remember then when I express thoughts about why a given pathology, for lack of a better term, in other words, a non-optimal state of being expresses in an individual, as a function of type, what I'm really saying is, here's how this set of cognitive habits, habitual manners of attention, sometimes produce or can explain that non-optimal state of functioning. Also, of course, I talk a lot about the ways in which different types can express an optimal state of functioning. That is to say, it's possible to use your set of habitual manners of attention, which link to one another and relate to other people's manners of attention in predictable ways. It's possible to manifest one's own habitual manners of attention in ways that are more or less optimal. I don't think there's any disputing that. And I, from my perspective, the TI user, the TI tool function user, 
metacognition plays a huge role in that. In other words, thinking about how one thinks and how one cognates and how one values and how one makes decisions and understanding them as relative as objects in a relatively absolute system is to say we can never really say for sure whether something's um, for example fi or ti but we can say that when we're focusing on the one we're not focusing on the other so There's a lot of things we can say about the way the humans behave, how they interact with one another, how they manifest the self, and what it means to manifest the self. It's important to remember there's not really anything we can experience or know or think or believe that isn't a manifestation of our singular self, so that this video, from your perspective, is that what you take away from it is the expression of your self that makes this video meaningful at all to you. Every one of us has to own, in some regard, that which we know before we can know it or believe it or objectify it. This is going to run afoul to an NI user's sense of objective truth to the reality that they consider. But regardless, the central takeaway here is I'm explaining why, not predicting necessarily how someone's going to manifest. And the distinction is important, and I didn't really make it clearly in the previous video. So I hereby issue that addendum. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, for God's sakes, keep forgetting. Don't forget, keep letting choose.